Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon, especially our newest supporters, Andy H., Philip M., David A., Bert N., and Scott H. It means a lot that you have chosen to monetarily support the channel. George Bauer shared a very interesting article on Inside EVs that shared some more details about Tesla's heat pump and octavalve. If you're new, basically this system moves hot air into specific areas of the car where and when it is needed. And just this morning, Tesla officially re-added the heat pump to the Model 3's online parts catalog. The heart of this article was the additional ways that the system can move heat between the passenger cabin, the battery, the drive unit, and outside ambient temperatures to improve the system efficiency beyond that of just a regular heat pump. These capabilities are enabled by the addition, of course, of the heat pump, the liquid-cooled condenser loop, and the eight-way octavalve that opens up many different ways of moving heat. The patent actually discussed a total of 12 heating modes and three cooling modes. And what's pretty neat is the system actually uses the thermal mass of the battery to store heat as energy. So the battery can be used as a heat source as it draws down the thermal energy that is stored in the pack. Taking a look here at mode 9 out of 15, Model Y can actually heat the cabin with three different sources of heat. As you can see, these three sources are the ambient heat drawn from the front radiator, which is the same as the conventional heat pump, the battery, and the drive motor and inverter. So using the higher temperature battery and drive motor heat sources actually improves the efficiency of the system because heat pumps do work best at warmer temperatures. Moving to figure seven, this shows yet another mode where heat can be drawn from the passenger cabin in to actually warm the battery. So think about a sunny winter day where your car is parked and the cabin is actually being heated from the sun but the battery is still cold. Tesla can now use the thermal mass of the battery to store the heat and according to George, about 2.5 to 3 kilowatt hours of heat energy can actually be stored in the pack. The article continues a bit deeper and shares some videos, so I've linked it in the description below if you'd like to learn more. Basically, there are 15 different operating modes as mentioned, and this is a great example of Tesla innovating at every level, which is how they are able to lead the way in efficiency. Next up, we get some cool footage from Foundry Planet of the assembly of a Gigapress. This one in particular was assembled at the Hydra factory in Italy. It was then most likely tested, deconstructed, and shipped out to final destination. The speculation is that this one in particular will end up at Giga Berlin or Giga Texas. Now, the naming of DCM 6100s number one and two were already installed at Fremont, according to the Gigapress Wikipedia page, with each machine weighing over 900,000 pounds. The locally produced Gigapress for Model Y in Shanghai is supposed to be named the Impress Plus DCC 6000, made by Hydra's parent company, LK Machinery. In the images shared with this video, you can see on the side, kind of, that it is the 6100 CS. All right, let's touch on the bare thesis for class eight trucking that the weight of EV batteries would always be an issue for long haul trucking. Well, according to Alke Hoekstra, a senior advisor for electric mobility, he recently shared that he believes within five years, electric trucks will become the logical choice for many bulk transporters and within 10 years, vehicles like the Tesla Semi will actually dominate new sales. Hoekstra attributed his confidence mostly to battery technology advancements, and while this is an endorsement for BEV Semis, we need to note his timeline of 5 to 10 years for this technology to be in the place where the Tesla Semi could quote, dominate new sales. Perhaps Bill Gates should update his projections. We got a really cool update from Reddit user Wandering Coder who drove into a forest in Hayden, Ohio with his Model 3 and his newly acquired Starlink. He connected a large battery pack to the Starlink equipment around 15 miles away from any cell service to do some testing. He was able to get 120 megabits per second download speeds and latency under 40 milliseconds 
although the latency did jump to around 140 milliseconds when under loads, which by the way is still very good given these circumstances. And this is very exciting as we know that the Cybertruck will most likely have a 120 volt outlet that will allow a Starlink terminal to be plugged directly into, making it an awesome connected camping experience. His summary comment, everything is of extreme build quality and this works significantly better than I had ever imagined. It feels like it's from the future. The antenna itself seems like it should be many thousands of dollars, so I just want to share how fortunate I feel to have access to this. Sticking with the Starlink updates, according to the Starlink Reddit thread, users are consistently getting over 150 megabit download speeds with the highest recorded so far being 205 megabits per second. Elon, however, reaffirmed on Twitter that lowering the terminal costs is still their most difficult technical challenge. Moving on, Tesla China on Twitter also shared a cool video about why customers love Tesla and why they are so passionate about the brand. I think this echoes the sentiment for the vast majority of Tesla owners and even people like myself who have only had the privilege of test driving a Tesla. It's just a different and overall better experience. Tesla should, in my opinion, undoubtedly have some of the strongest brand loyalty of any automaker ever. If you want to see the whole video, it is linked below. We got some news about Giga Texas. The latest estimate for job creation at the site is now 15,000 new jobs, up from the previous estimate of 9,000. This is coming from panelists at the second annual East Austin Growth Summit. Ed Latson, the executive director of the Austin Regional Manufacturers Association, explained that this new job estimate is due to the scope of Tesla's operations, citing how dozens of suppliers followed Tesla to Nevada upon opening Giga Nevada. Latson added, quote, they have a reputation of wanting their suppliers close to them and they're going to make that request for critical suppliers. So I wouldn't be shocked if we had 50 plus companies move here to support this facility. My hope is that those 50 come, but that they also find another 50 that are already here. End quote. James Locke shared a quick video on YouTube of the new full self-driving beta apparently avoiding some road debris. Here is the clip and I will let you make of it what you will. And to wrap up today's episode, a quick tweet from Ray for Tesla shows us a recent teardown in China reveals a majority of components for the made in China Model 3 are locally made as of now. This is great for Q4 earnings. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Please like this video if you did, consider subscribing for more Tesla content, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.